everyone, welcome back to Kidding Around. My name is Melanie Smith and I am thrilled that you are here with me today for another Test Tube Tuesday. As you know, on Tuesdays we do all things scientific and today is no different. Today we will be building an anemometer, which is an instrument that measures the speed of the wind. <gasps> Before we do that though, if you like what you're seeing here and want to follow along with all of Kidding Around's videos, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and then also below each video click the thumbs up. And if you really like what you're doing here, please make sure to share us with your friends. Thank you very much. So moving on to Test Tube Tuesday and talking about wind and wind speed. You know, where I live, we are entering into the fall and winter seasons, and those two seasons bring us a lot of wind. Do you get wind during specific seasons where you live? I know some places get a lot of wind in the summer, too. And it's interesting because wind can blow at different speeds. So if you were to measure the speed of the wind during a big windstorm, it would be going much faster than if it were just a normal day with a normal breeze. That breeze would be going a lot slower than the wind during the windstorm. So you get to build today an instrument that you can take out into the wind or into the breeze and measure it so you'll know how fast it's going. So the materials that you will need for this project are four paper cups, a container with a plastic lid. This is an old frosting container. You could also use a coffee can or something that size. The only thing is you need to make sure it has a plastic lid and it's a lid that you can put a hole in. You'll also need two cardboard strips. These should be anywhere from an inch and a half to two inches thick and then also somewhere between eight and 12 inches long. These are the two that I will be using. You'll need a stapler. You'll need a small nail, and be careful because the end can be sharp. You'll need some uh, decorative tape or something to use that you can put on one of these cups as it goes around because that will help you be able to measure the speed. And then you'll need a glue dot. You will also need an unsharpened pencil with a complete and full eraser. You know, this is a kidding around pencil, and the really cool thing about it is that it's hypercolor. So if you're sitting and you're using it for just a few minutes, or you roll it between your hands like this, the color actually changes. You can see there, it goes from green to yellow. These are available in our supply kits on our website. So if you're interested in that, you can ask a grown up to check into that. Okay, so are you ready for our anemometer? Let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do as you build this wind meter or this anemometer is take your plastic lid off of its container and poke a hole in the center of the lid. This is something that you should ask an adult for help with. I, um, you can see I have already poked my hole in this lid. I just took a pair of scissors, just one of the blades, and I poked down right into the center. Again, ask an adult for help and try to get it as close to in the center as possible. So what you will be doing then is taking your pencil and sticking it down into that hole that you just made in the lid. And it may take a little bit of finagling and that's okay, that's actually good because we don't want this pencil to move too much. And you know, even making sure, making more sure of that, I actually take a glue dot and I am going to put the glue dot on the end of my unsharpened pencil so this part is the part that I would sharpen if I were going to, but I'm not going to. And then I am going to stick that down and I'm going to stick it down in the center. Here, I'll take this lid off so you can see better. I am sticking the pencil in the center of my container and then I will put the lid on top of the pencil, just like that. Between the tight lid and the glue dot, you should be able to keep that pencil from moving too much. So the next thing that we will do is take our cardboard strips and make them into an X. Once you have them centered like that, you are going to take your stapler and you're going to staple twice to keep these two pieces together. You're going to staple once here and once here. The one thing that you want to make sure that you don't do is staple right in the middle. We have something that needs to go in the middle and it can't go through a staple. All right, so then we take our stapler and we staple right here, just like that. And then you go to the other side and you do the same thing. This is something you may need to ask an adult or an older sibling for help with. I'm sure they would be happy to help. 
So once you have that done, you are going to then take your cups and attach them to the ends of this X. And you're going to do that also with a stapler. Another thing to keep in mind is that you want all of your cups to be facing the same way. So if they were to be blown, that the wind would catch each one of them by going inside the cup, all right? So I am going to staple this one in just like that. And you know, this is something that you can ask a grown up or an older sibling for help with if it's just too hard to staple through that cardboard. You know, I have a heavy duty stapler and sometimes even for me, I have a little bit of problem with it. <laughs> all right, so here's our third one. And you see, again, they're all facing the same direction. And then this fourth one, before I put it on, I am going to decorate it in some way so that if it were spinning, I would have something to be able to see every single time it went around. So I am going to take this watermelon tape because I think that that is a great a great tape for the kidding around a channel that loves watermelons. And I am going to tape, this tape is very sticky. I'm going to decorate it. <laughs> so I'm just going to put two strips on the top of the cup so that I would be able to see that as it flies around in the wind. Or as it rotates around in the wind, I should say. I don't want you to imagine it flying up. All right, so then I have that decorated and now I'm going to staple this one, not that way, right? Oh, I almost did it wrong. Now I'm going to staple this going the same way on the end of my X. There we go. Okay, so now I have my cups that are ready to go on this anemometer or to make this anemometer. So then I am going to very, very carefully take the nail that I mentioned and I am going to put it through the center of the X. And I am going to very carefully making sure that my hand beneath that is holding this is not right under where that nail would come through. And I'm going to gently push this through. I'm also going to be very careful not to push this nail through on something as it's as the anemometer part is sitting flat on a table, because if I were to try to push that through right now, I would scratch the table. So this is definitely something to ask an adult for, make sure that they're watching and they're helpful if you need some help. Okay, so now I have my nail through and I'm going to now very carefully attach it to the top of this pencil. And I'm going to turn this so hopefully that you can see. I'm going to try to get it in the center of the pencil as much as possible. And then I am going to just push in there. Again, I'm sure that someone can help. If that is too hard to push in, make sure to ask a grown up for help. All right, now my anemometer is complete. Let's see if it works. <gasps> It certainly does. So this is now ready for action. So the way that you use this is you can take this out into the wind or into a breeze and you start counting the revolutions per minute. So what I mean by a revolution is if this watermelon cup starts right near me, it's the closest to me and it goes all the way around and it ends up back right close to me again, that we count as one revolution. So I'm going to take my stopwatch out and I'm going to set it for a minute and then I am going to count the number of times that this watermelon cup goes past me. So if it goes past me five times in the minute on my stopwatch, we would say this has gone around five revolutions per minute. So that is interesting data, but I have to say the data isn't super interesting until you're able to compare it to another time out with your anemometer. So if you go out the next day and you count the number of times that this watermelon cup passes you and it's seven, you know that the next day the wind was faster than the first day. So it's kind of interesting. You could actually start a chart and you could know what, you know, the different wind speeds feel like because you've measured them all. 
So you should take this out. You could take it out in a windstorm. You could take it out in a breeze. You could take it out on just a normal day that you don't feel any wind and see just how fast the wind is blowing. One recommendation is that you hold it while you're out in the wind, or if you can't hold it, you weight down this container with a lot of rocks. Because if it just flies off, it's not gonna give you any data, and then you've lost your anemometer. So take care of it. I would love to see pictures of your completed anemometers. Please ask an adult to put those on our Facebook page. It's lovely to see your faces in those pictures too, if you would like. You can also share the wind speed at your house with us. Please make sure to put that information in as well. That's fun to know how fast the wind is blowing in certain places all over the world. You know, that data, data like knowing the wind speed, is data that meteorologists use. Meteorologists are people who study the weather and study weather trends and then are able to predict what is going to happen based on current trends around them. Maybe this is the jumping off point to you becoming a meteorologist. Maybe not, but you know what? Either way, you will be able to know a little bit more about the wind. Thank you so much for being a scientist with me today. I've really had a ton of fun. I hope you have as well. Thank you so much for kidding around with me. I will see you next time. Bye.